the choice that I made for a CMS. I've kept going with that and um, I now even do the brochure where in there in case the client then turns around at the end of the day and goes, oh, I actually want this, this or this, I need to go for a community and then all I've got to do is just install the extra extension. The elaborate site, um, the one that I'm, I was hoping to get live by today but they've got content um, issues so we haven't been able to switch across it, uh, uses around a hundred different extensions including a dozen that are custom written, has about 50 template overrides that I've had to put in place um, and luckily for me probably add somewhere between 20 and 100 percent onto the price I can charge for future sites which is really good for me. So we started the Melbourne Journal User Group about uh, four years ago in proper sort of momentum to it. Um, I've probably I think at one point I did a head count at a journal meeting and 80% of the people in the room or people who have been regular attendees I'd ended up doing work for consulting to them and um, helping them pick extensions or helping them implement uh, customised extensions. And if you're in the type of role with that many sites you'll find that you naturally progress into looking regularly at the extensions directory and can see what comes up that's new, upgraded, and ideally try and keep on top of it. Um, but you'll also find that after a while, even though there's 8,502 extensions when I looked uh, two days ago, that you'll actually find that uh, you'll only ever really focus in on about 20 of them that you'll use regularly, and then it depends on what else you're doing as to whether the 8,500 come in play. So one of the things that I've got is a, a skeleton site that I installed. Let's switch it across to Will you be making this available online? Yeah, so the, um, the main presentation is going to be on the conference website, linked also to the regular journal website, and I'm probably going to try and slip, sit down. Um, Brian Tiemann's presentation this morning, he's going to actually re-record the audio and sync it up to the slide share and then upload that as a, a, a video version of the slide share presentation. I'm probably going to try and get around to doing the same. The, the main part of it will be on, uh, you, you upload the videos afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So Peter's going to have all the videos in the sessions online. Um, so this skeleton um, is actually running 1.5.24, but I haven't updated the article title. And what this is is a subdomain sub on my main website, which I then add all the updates of extensions to and then use um, a key to backup to create a copy. And then I put that, on, I run cPanel on my server and I put that um, JPA backup file into the cPanel skeleton folder. And then whenever I deploy a new client or, or load a new client, um, chances are, because of the way I've got my um, hosting set up, uh, that I'm also doing their website design. So what happens is that the kickstart files and the JPA archive with all the stuff pre-installed goes into that folder and then I just go to the new domain, type in kickstart PHP and start the process of unpacking the entire skeleton. And you can see there's some of the, the components that I've got installed. Uh, so uh, we've got a key to backup, um, <coughs> back to the default, JCE as the editor, um, J Comments is installed, J News is installed, which is a, a newsletter component, Kamina Forum, which I've actually turned off in the skeleton, but it's still installed. Um, and that way it's easier for me just to turn it on when I do need to deploy a forum. Uh, RS Forms Pro, uh, SH404 section. Now this is an old screen grab because the, the latest SH4 has a different um, icon there. Uh, and XMAP, which is a, a Google XML site map component. Uh, there's probably another half a dozen extensions that haven't made that screen grab that I did when I first set up the, the, uh, the skeleton. Um, and the main one of those is probably uh, the no number extension manager which then in turn lets you install 22 no number extensions um, which uh, are very very handy. Oops. 
So with 8,502, oh, how are you going to handle questions? <laughs> yeah, no, so I'm just putting your hand up in the middle. Right, um, So that's like, like you've got all those extensions. How much does it slow loading it down? You know, what effect does it have on, on, uh, on the speed of the, the upload? Very well, what you'll find is that the, the, if your average Joomla site has all those extensions installed to do the functionality that you want, those extensions are already in the play and, and loading. The hard drive space that it consumes will increase compared to the regular Joomla build. Um, I'd have to log in and look at what the current size of it is, but uh, the 1.7 full package I think is about 8 meg at the moment. Yeah, not from Android. Um, with all those extensions installed, I think it's about a 12 meg um, JPA file. No, just the actual speed of, of it uploading on, on someone's browser, no? you know, on the front end. Yeah, yeah, no, so, so because all the stuff is only cool when it's needed, oh. it doesn't really affect that. And it becomes the same as a normal Joomla site when it loads. Yeah. It just will be calling the extensions when it, when it does run. So the, the site I was saying where I've got all the template overrides and all the, the extra components mm -hmm. um, is currently loading three times faster than their ASP site is loading, so they're very happy with that fact. Um, and the search and a couple of other factors um, were taking you know, two or three seconds on the screen and a silly little loading graphic. Um, their search now loads instantly and they're, they're looking forward to turning it on next week and suddenly having hopefully a deluge of, of um, traffic that's not bouncing. Um, just going back to the, mm -hmm. the KP yes. systems, yep. um, you've created a, an empty Joomla site with the extensions yep. in backed it up yep. and then copied that into the cPanel skeleton. Yep. So when you create the new site... Uh, yeah, so um, <coughs> if, I, if I'm not creating a new account on my cPanel hosting, I can just log into the file manager for that account. So if it's someone else's server, yeah. I then upload Kickstart, PHP, the English I &I file yeah. um, for the Kickstart package and the JPA archive file. And then you just run kickstart PHP and that will find the JPA file. Yeah. So what's in the skeleton file? What do you put in this skeleton, this uh, cPanel skeleton? So your cPanel skeleton, I have to look up the exact yeah, file. What, what, what's in it? The JPA file? Or so I've got the, the JPA file for the skeleton, Yeah. the kickstart PHP file, yeah. the English language file for the kickstart PHP, and an index HTML file, um, which has uh, a Google search box and you know, you've now arrived at a new site hosted by KP Systems. Um, we'll have the site up soon. In the meanwhile, search on Google, which has my publisher ID on it. So anyone that clicks on sponsors links, I get a little trickle of revenue. <laughs> okay. Hasn't actually made any money from it, but that's a nice one. Um, and ideally, when I've put that up, this, the as soon as I install the skeleton the site will be live in one form or another and maybe switched off in maintenance mode so yeah. a visitor will just get the um, inaccessible message. So you just build it up the way you want it with all the extensions you want? Yeah. As a, yeah. As a, a big template? Yeah, pretty much so. So it's, it's basically a, a pre-packaged Joomla site. site on steroids yeah. uh, and it currently saves me up to two hours of just installing the extensions to get it to the point where I've got everything in place. I love it. And that green template is just thrown together in artist so that when I load it, I know that I've got a template that's not um, one of the default ones. But I know sort of my default. So where to begin? Start off with extensions.joomla.org, which opened up in March 2006. Uh, it's the busiest joomla.org site made. 3 million visits a month. Steady flow of new extensions. Uh, the other presentation I grabbed from had all these different stats. The, the graph basically went nicely up at a 45 degree angle over that five year period. The interesting fact was that two thirds of the extensions are free out of that 8,000, and one third have a, a commercial tag to it. So that sort of breaks down into how open source versus commercial uh, considerations are going that it is a, a, as much as a third of extensions that uh, are available with a commercial fee to them. So there's a whole lot of factors in choosing an extension. 
whether it's suitable for your needs, whether it's quality in regards to whether it's going to fall over when you install it, whether it's going to install properly when you install it. Reliability, that it keeps doing what it's supposed to do. It doesn't have bugs, it doesn't fall over when you put a particular type of data in it. How long it's been around, how long the development cycle has been around. Uh, so Joomla Tools is Docman is a, a good example that it's been around since extensions really started in Joomla and it's continuing to be developed. What the support's like and what the documentation's like. And quite often that can be actually the most frustrating part about any extension. And then there's a few other factors that we can cover. So you've got to look at what you're trying to do or what the clients ask you for, which can quite often be a bit of a gap there. And the gap quite often is caused by the client saying, I want a shop, but not saying how they want that shop to work, what the workflows are for an order, uh, what type of payment gateway they want until you suggest one to them, um, which can quite often bring down a, a whole set of requirements. If I think that is an extension that I've used in the past that will work, is there an extension that someone's written to do a particular task, but I could modify it with a template override or something like that to, to do the same job, uh, and then I've got the benefit of the extra features that are in that part of the, the component? Is there a demo available? Which quite often is the most frustrating part when you can't actually go and just do a quick play to save you that 20 minute process of trying to download it, install it, get it basically configured. If you can go and look at an extension in action, quite often that's the sales pitch that uh, you need to get over the line. So an example is if someone's looking for an e-commerce solution, what does that solution need to do? So I've had clients that have got 1,500 products, so they need a full volume virtue mark, shopping cart, ordering system, um, inventory tracking built into it and a whole lot of other things. I've got other clients that need to basically do, uh, so I've actually timed it so that on Monday morning at 7 o'clock in the morning you can go to the Melbourne Camera Club site and book into one of the 40 places for next February's introduction course. And that's done with just a PayPal cart button um, and has an inventory counter on 40 and as soon as it gets to 40 Place is still up, it turns off that particular functionality. You know, the, the Joomla bit will still let you book, try and book, it will then spit out there at the end. Um, this one is who to understand or who knows what MVC stands for? Okay, so it's Model View Controller. So, I keep looking at Andrew for a nod. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's what the, the core Joomla programming model is. One of the things that a poor extension is going to do is not adhere necessarily to that standard. And the biggest problem you'll have in penalty in, in picking an extension that doesn't do that is if they can't handle a template override because it's not being written to look at a particular protocol in, in Joomla. Um, yeah, uh, in, does an extension get checked for that in the JED? Not really. No. So when extensions are submitted to the JED, they go through a review process, looks at their licensing, so there's GPL, looks at a couple of other factors. Um, sometimes this is hard to test. So if you've got one that's written properly in MVC, you can create a template override file, which is a copy of the HTML that does the layout in your template slash HTML folder, and from there you can override the default installed functionality in your template and make it look much, much different. <coughs> Doesn't have a good JED rate, so all of the extensions in uh, Joomla have a, a rating factor. I'm going to bring up um, Okay. 
Right, so this is the JED, and this is the page for K2, which we went through So it doesn't have good rating. So up here we've got the rating, and currently it's scoring 4.35 out of 5 um, from 286 votes, which is probably one of the highest scores with that number of votes. Quite often you'll only ever see a 5 when there's under 10 votes, and it's the developers' mates have all gone in and had a quick review to push it up the scale. <laughs> Is it an editor's pick? And this one currently is popular. No. Let's see, no, it's not. Oh, is that popular in the other city? Okay. So up the top here you got popular and that means that someone at the JD has made it um, a, a popular extension. Editor's pick, I think, is actually a different tag in it. So, um, and that means that you've actually got uh, the people that are reviewing the extensions think it's a really good extension. Chances are it's also got the high ratings and all the other parts along the way. It doesn't have plenty of downloads, so you quote views of the page to the others. 425,000 people have gone and, and taken a look at K2, which is pretty impressive. Um, if there's only got a few things left, then it's a bit of a problem. Uh, there's another thing to look at, there's a, a vulnerable extensions list. There's actually a page that's maintained which you can get to from the front of the, the extension directory, which will give you all the extensions over the last five years, six years probably now, that have been blacklisted for some security fault, and then quite often will tell you that they have either still got the problem or that has been fixed in a particular version, and so if you upgrade that extension, you'll then get away from that problem still being there, um, and ideally that will secure your site. So if you're regularly subscribing to uh, RSS feeds, I'd suggest monitoring that only because it certainly tells you what's going on. Right. Reliability, does it have positive reviews? Just a quick question. Yep. What's the level of frequency of the malware trojan and the nastiness like that in the extensions? It's been steadily falling, I believe. Um, the list that's that's set out of 8,500 extensions, but that vulnerable extensions list has a couple of hundred entries on it. Um, but I don't know that there's many. Uh, you, oh sorry, there's none that I use that I know are still on the list with a current um, vulnerability. So keeping on top of that certainly is a. Sorry, that's not quite true. I've got one extension on this new site. I inherited the development of the site and the previous developers had actually customised so much of the core of one of the components that I can't upgrade that core component um, without rerunning the whole site. And the, the 2.0 version of the site, once we've got the first one launched, will take that entire component and bin it and replace it with K2. Uh, so if you read through the reviews for a, uh, a listing, you'll quite, quite often see the variety that you know, this five-star one, this short sweep gets to the point. But the next person's got quite a uh, issue with it. And then what you should find if it's a good extension with an active developer is that the owner of that extension will come back and reply to the respond to the, uh, the feedbacks, ideally very quickly. Quite often you'll see that lower rated extensions with lots of problems don't have an active developer and one stars will generally be the best way to review and remove the, the things. So. It's worth checking even though they may no longer be active on the vulnerable extensions list, you should check whether they still are listed uh, on there, or sorry, have been listed on there, because it might play a, a particular issue if when the component has been updated for a while. Um, does it install correctly? Um, I've had 
a number of extensions over the years where there might be language file incompatibility, might have some other quirk. In fact, I think the current version of K2, when we were doing a demo at the Joomla, the Joomla user group last week, when you installed it, some of the language flags on the install file were actually broken. So you got the tag for the language variable, but it probably meant because it was showing that, there wasn't an actual language value in the, the file. So uh, <coughs> 2.5 and K2 seemed very stable when we were playing with it the other day, but we did find about eight bugs that we'd go sit down and, and write up reports for. Are the parameters clear? So when you actually go into a module or a plugin, are the parameters all nicely laid out? Are there parameters quite often? So <coughs> with a couple of these customers, custom plugins that I've had to build for uh, this super site, um, I've made the effort of putting in a couple of features, one of which um, if they don't put any parameters, because uh, the particular module that I built, they have to call it on about 50 pages, but in the parameters for the call uh, using modules anywhere, they actually have to put which category they want to pull out of the database. So rather than having the module manager with 50 instances, there's just the one instance of the module and the parameters are loaded using the call. Um, so to make sure that the client can do that themselves, if they don't put any parameters in, it spits out all the options that are available for them, um, with the limit of how many get displayed, uh, which category to choose, actually shows them all the numbers for the category ID, so they can put those in, um, and then builds the whole thing um, automatically. Shows that in when you load the, uh, load the model in the front end. It also has that in the C data in the XML. So when you install the component or the extension, you'll get that entire instruction list. And then when you go and modify that module, it'll also show in the instructions and, and it actually closes up in the version of it. I've seen a number of extensions where it's got one line of text that says this is the name of the extension and that's all you get. You don't you have to work out all the rest of it yourself. Um, unfortunately, that's more common than uncommon. Um, so quite often, it then leads to the other factors of capture and set. Uh, does it give you the functionality you expected? That's always one that's hard for you to tell until you start playing with it. Um, the template override settings is one part of it. When you upgrade it, will it save the existing settings that you've got for that parameter of the extension, or will it override it? Uh, so SH404 set is a good one. It's actually got an option in the settings to allow you to maintain the settings when you upgrade it, or reset the settings when you upgrade it. Maintaining it's always good because you can do things like turn off the generator tag, change H1s to H2, which you might not want to do for every page or every site. And so if that changed every time you reinstalled the component, then you'd have a problem. Did look at when it was added to the JED. Uh, so on the K2 site, it was 2014. Yeah. Uh, for the time 2009, and then when it was last updated, on the 27th of October 2011. So that gives you the, the timeline as to how it's been going. Does it support multiple general versions? So we've got 1.5, oh, sorry, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. Uh, you'll also have a 1.0 for the, the old ones, and you'll see 1.5 legacy, um, which I think is now almost been taken out of the JED. Um, because um, it really does cripple your site if you've got legacy turned on. Uh, that would be one speed factor that um, affects things. On the developer side, is there an update history and a change log for the uh, what's happened to the extension over time? Um, which can be quite handy if you try to work out whether there's a, an issue. On the Joomla the long AE site, um, we've been constantly working with Sozzle, who's in Canberra, who's on the Kamina um, 
bring it done. And he's been sort of pointing us in the direction of where to fix things along the way. Um, we've now got to the point where we're going to do an upgrade to the latest version of Camino, and that should ideally fix a whole lot of the problems, and that's all shown in the Camino change on. So. Uh, is the developer's site still active? Quite often I've found that the developer shuts up shop, has been supporting this little plugin for a while. Uh, the one that was probably the most annoying was uh, one called Mossif, which is a 1.0 plugin, um, which now you can do all that sort of stuff in a couple of the known number extensions. But that plugin sort of didn't ever get graduated to 1.5 and then sort of fizzled out and doesn't have a site really even anymore. Uh, and where I was pointing out the comments there earlier, the, the developer responds, responds to the JG <coughs> comments. There's a whole lot of extensions that a couple of years ago were removed from the JED, so I've already seen this crap. <laughs> it does this spike a couple of years ago. And that's where they went through and removed all this, the ones that weren't GPL compliant, had other issues, and where developers hadn't actually responded to the JED's request for them to update their listing and, and manage it all. So uh, if that had happened, it's probably going to, would have probably been closer to 9,000 or 10,000 extensions on the site. <coughs> So then you've got to look at support levels. And I'm keeping the time playing, so I'm going to race through this part. Um, if it's commercial extension or free extension, do they provide commercial support? Uh, is, does the extension have its own forum? Uh, is there good support or good discussion on the Joomla forums? Is there good discussion on the Australian Joomla forums? Um, quite often, some of the free extensions will give a form so that you have to do it yourself to work it out and hopefully get other users responding, um, which is one of the things we're trying to do with the help and troubleshooting on the joomla.org.au forum. <coughs> Some of the best support that I've received for Joomla extensions has been free for a free extension. Some of the worst has been commercial extensions with paid contract commercial support. So depending on how you go about your initial selection as to whether you have a good or a bad experience. Is there any documentation? Is there a link on the JED to say documentation, which would be always handy? Uh, are there instructions on how to install it and upgrade it? Uh, are there instructions by say in the actual module extension itself? Are there tool tips next to the parameters to tell you what that parameter is going to actually do in your extension? And sometimes you'll find that there might be some documentation or no documentation. It might be poorly implemented, poorly written. Because of the nature of Joomla, participation and giving back to the community, as Brian said earlier, it's all about you. It's the magic secret hidden ingredient. The more you contribute back, the more you can help with all that sort of stuff. Um, occasionally brilliant. Documentation for Peter West and Peter Van Weston's no number extensions. Um, is very good. His support is very good and it's a perfect example of how it probably should be done in most cases. Um, and considering he's got 22 extensions constantly being updated, sometimes I wonder how he has time to do that for support and the project. Other factors you can consider uh, whether you need extensions to talk to other extensions, talk to external systems. I've got a client at the moment that wants the Joomla site to spit information into a CRM and needs to do it through an API. Can you test the extension in your own little development site? So in addition to the sand over to the skeleton, I've got another stuff in the name called Sandbox and I've got Sandbox 1.7, which is the 1.7 version now. And so everything's installed on there and I can just go and do whatever, play around it, and then bend it later or just leave it until the next time I need the experiment. Did you back up before installing the new extension so you can roll back? Uh, the key backup also has a, a feature that lets you set a restore point that you can roll back that last extension. Um, I find that it can be a bit hard to utilise because of the number of extensions I'm installing. But if you're only doing an occasional one, have it on once your site's gone into um, live mode. You can uninstall extensions you're not using in Joomla or turn them off. Um, which is always a good one to bring down some of the load time factor. 
Also, if you've got the first the user in the back end of the system doing um, doing the content, things like that, hiding all the things that they shouldn't have access to, makes it certainly easier. Hiding components that they don't know that they're supposed to be able to use, is certainly a very good idea. So the other things that you can do, uh, create your own favourites collection. So I've got it in the skeleton format. Um, I've tweeted a couple of examples of favourite and must-have lists on uh, Twitter today. So if you're following the hash SJD11 hashtag, there's a couple of posts from me, it's just uh, at page. Uh, become a specialist in a particular component, and that way if people have got, especially the generally user groups, um, if you've got a K2 expert in the group that you can sort of throw questions at, if you've got an uh, RS forms expert, you end up with someone that you can go to occasionally to ask questions. If you do something that's really unique, blog it so other people can do uh, some can follow it up. Currently, one of my blogs on RS Forms Pro validation scripts for phone numbers and emails comes up straight under the RS Skinlock uh, homepage examples. So I think they've got three links if you go RS Skinlock validation, and then there's my post. So ideally, over time, as I keep on, I've actually got about 20 articles on my site that are in draft, that are all these blog posts with all these little bits of assistance that will be coming out over time, as I get time to write. Um, if you give feedback on the JED, that helps the community. If you help on an extension forum, that helps the community. And you can volunteer on the JED team. Um, and the link that's on the presentation will get uploaded will show you, take you straight to how you can help out with the, the team of the people that are reviewing, managing, editing, uh, all the things that you want to do. Um, so coming up, there's going to be a few things that affect Joomla, the new version 2.5, and then the next upgrade to 3. There's a new look Joomla extensions directory and that link will take you to uh, a preview of what that's going to look like. There's only a few subtle changes to a certain degree, but there's some new features that will make reviewing extensions a lot easier. When we covered extensions, there's a whole world to do with templates and there's a new Joomla template directory that will be launched which will create things the same environment across into the template world. So part of your work extension is an ongoing process. Um, I hope that's going to help you in picking your extensions in the future. I don't know if we've got some questions. questions so. Anyone have any questions, Patrick, they can ask him during the break. Yep. Or tweet them to me at the party, um, or go to my website, and or go to the joomla.org.au forum and post them in the help and troubleshooting section, which I'm a moderator for. So if you've got a generic question, or, or some questions needs assistance. I think I'll be there. Thank you.